Hi folks, I'm here today and we're going to have a chat about OSPF, Open Shortest Path First. And I've got an exercise that I'd like to look at with you guys. And you'll see here the objectives that we're going to look at. Part one is going to be configuring OSPF routing on all routers. Part two is going to be configuring the OSPF router IDs. And part three is going to be verifying the OSPF routing using show commands. So what's the main aim of the game here, guys? Well, really the main aim is to get PC1 communicating with both PC2 and PC3. And what I've done is I've just labeled these sites, if you like, Dublin, Galway, and Cork. So essentially, we want to get this standards-based interior gateway routing protocol that's very, very common and used in a lot of organizations today, routing between different sites. And again, it's called Open Shorts path first because it's a standardized RFC request for comments protocol. So how do we get started with this? Well, the big thing is we're going to look at obviously um, essentially configuring each of these routers. And then what we look at is how the, the configuration works. And we'll look at the, the intrinsic details of, for example, the network command, which kind of pulls together and, and um, allows the routers to share routes with each other. So let's let's start off with router one here, and you can see that when I when I just double click into this, I've got some basic connectivity. So if I hover over my router for a moment, all I've essentially done is I've ensured to configure each of the IP addresses on this router. Okay, so for example, I've got um i've got let's well let's let's go in here so that we can see it a little bit clearer because it's very very small so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into show ip interface brief and let's make this a little bit bigger so that we can actually see this so what i've got at the moment is i've configured this router one with a number of different ip addresses so you can see in this case fast ethernet 00, zero which connects off to this dublin network it's got an ip address of 172.16.1.17 I've got serial interface 000, which basically connects up to my Galway site with this IP of 192, say 10.1. And I've got a serial 001 interface that's connecting over to my Cork site, which is here. So you'll also notice that I've created a loopback interface. So just to, to reiterate what a loopback interface is, this is an interface that's obviously not a physical interface. It's basically a virtual interface, and when we configure these, they're always in an up-up state. So what's so good about these? It's not like that I can pull out a cable of the router and essentially it will go down. It will only go down if I actually turn it off or get rid of it, delete it completely. So sometimes people will use these as their, if you like, label for the routing process or the OSPF routing process. So what we'll see in a few moments is when I go to turn on the OSPF routing process, it will either pick the highest interface that is up. The only thing that will beat that is if I've configured a loopback interface. So for example, at the moment I can see this, this interface is up, this interface is up, and obviously this interface is up. So if, for example, this loopback wasn't there, what would actually happen is it would choose this guy as its router ID. And what is a router ID? A router ID is simply a name for the router. And this router name is important because it uses it in the wired system. So essentially, if I didn't have that loop back, it would choose that. So let's let's just do a quick test, just, just show that for a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go in and remove that, that um, loop back interface for a moment. So I'm gonna go um, interface loop back zero and I'm just going to say no IP address to just literally take that off so exit exit again I'm going to go show IP interface brief and now you can see I've unassigned this loopback interface so what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to show a command called show IP protocols to just essentially it asks the router hey show me if you're running any routing protocols so at this stage I'm expecting it not to have any routing protocols running so let's just uh, do that I can see straight away there's no output so there's no routing protocols running. Again, I could have I could have checked this by going in and looking at the running configuration of the router. And I could see this. If I go down here, I can see that 
I've just taken out the IP address of that loop back here. I can see the details for the, the specific details of my fast Ethernet 00, zero and the subnet mask. I'm noticing there that it's not a standard slash 24, it's actually a slash 28 from our subnetting. And if I just scroll down, I'll be able to see all the other interfaces and their IP addresses. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how I can turn on the router process or the, the OSPS, the OSPF routing, routing process. So how I do that is I go by, I type in, in configuration mode, I'm gonna go router, OSPF, and it's asking them for a routing process if I just press the question mark. So I can pick essentially any ID here. So again, from one to 65,000. But again, what I like to say is keep things simple. Okay, so in other words, what I like to do is whenever I'm turning on OSPF, I always like to just keep it simple and just pick one. Okay, all you'll need is one routing OSPF process. So once I've done that, guys, Essentially, I've just flicked the switch on my router to turn on the OSPF routing process. So it's now running. Now, I'm not advertising any routes at the moment, and I'm not sending out any hello messages, and we'll talk about them shortly, but I'm just essentially, I've just flicked on the switch to say, hey, I'd like to speak OSPF now, but I'm not giving it any details. How do I know this? If I go exit and exit again, I can now do a show IP protocols, protocols, okay? And what this should show me is, it should show me, for example, the OSPF routing process running. So before you'll notice that I didn't have any output here when I ran it before, but now I can see that I'm, I'm indeed running a routing protocol, and that's OSPF, and the process number is one there, okay? But also, what I wanted to highlight for you here is that the router ID that it's picked is the highest interface, the highest working interface, or the interface that's up, up. Okay, how do I, how can I see that? Because if I go show IP int brief, it's chosen that interface, okay? So again, why did it choose that one? Because that's the highest one. Why is that the highest? Because that's greater than 192.168.10.1, and it's also greater than 172, okay? So this one essentially wins. If I was to configure now a loopback interface, okay, and it doesn't matter what IP address it is, that would take precedence over the highest interface, okay? So how could I how could I show this? Well, what I could do is I could go comp T, I could go IP, um, so I could go interface loopback zero, okay, and we have that. I could go IP address, and I could put that same IP address on it again, IP. 1.1.1.1.255.255, and let's give it a full 32-bit mask. So now, if I go exit, and what I need to do, essentially, to get this to take precedence, because nothing's changed at the moment. If I did a uh, show IP protocols, nothing's changed. It would still have that same IP router ID. What I need to do is I need to turn off the router and the OSPF process and restart it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go COMT. I'm going to go no router OSPF 1 and essentially what that does is turns off the routing process and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go router OSPF 1 to turn it back on. Now once it's turned back on I'm going to go exit, exit again and show IP protocols. Now what should happen is now the fact that I've restarted essentially the routing process it should now pick up my loopback as the router ID. So let's check that and indeed it does. Phew. Okay, glad that did that as I said it would. So what I can now do, and you can and this this routing process, this routing ID is important because again, this router is what it will use to communicate its name to the rest of the network. So what I'm now going to do, guys, is there is one other way that I'd like to show you how to get this to pick its name. Um, and it's called a router ID command. So what I can do is I could go into router OSPF one and if I want to change this process that router ID name essentially there is another command that takes precedence and that's router ID so if I wanted to give this router ID and let's say because this is router one let's say I want to put this to let's just pick a random number of let's say 20.20.20.20 20 20 20 and let's put 255, 255, 255, 255, 
um, essentially that will change my, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm adding a mask there. I actually don't need to do that. I can just literally just put in the IP address that's complaining there saying, hey, you don't need to give me a mask, just give me the router ID. So once I do that, guys, and I literally go control C, back to privilege mode, I now show show IP protocols. What it should do is because I've used the router ID command, it should change actually my router name to that ID. So what I can see is that took precedence and it changed it straight away. So a lot of the time people will say, hey, start off, create the router ID, the name that you want going forward. So you don't have to, um, like I had to use with the, the, the loopback interface, I don't have to take the network down and bring it back up. I, I just have it straight away, right out the door, I give it the name that I want. So let's, let's now look, guys, at how do we actually get this router OSPF process up and running and start advertising networks into the other routers to tell it about essentially this network here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go com t, I'm going to go router OSPF1 and what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to use my network command and if you've watched any of my earlier videos and if you've done some configuration on routers before you may have used a RIP routing protocol. Now again RIP it's kind of ironic but this routing protocol is essentially dead now. Not a lot of organizations will use this because again it had a lot of limitations but a lot of organizations like to use OSPF. Why? It gives us a lot of flexibility. Okay and what we'll see now is in order for me to turn on OSPF I can I need to use this network statement to number one if you like advertise the particular network and to turn it on to match this interface and number two to start sending hello messages out into the wider network. So what I'm going to do now is guys I'm going to just run through this with you this first network command and you can see what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to if you like advertise this interface into the OSPF process. So this network that it, essentially this fast Ethernet is off is the 172.16.1.16 network. And what I can do is if if this was if this was essentially um, RIP, I might have done something like this before. I might have done because it's a class B network, I might have just literally went 172.16.0.0 and pressed enter. But what we'll see with OSPF is OSPF will say, hold on a second, I need more information. I need you to be more specific about this particular network and what you'd like me to, to advertise into this routing process and in particular the OSPF process. So what I now need to do is I need to say 172.16.1.16. Now again, what we'll see and maybe as I create more videos on OSPF over time is OSPF gives us a lot of flexibility and options here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one way of configuring these network commands. And we're going to base it off this subnet. And if you've been familiar with access control lists before, so again, stopping permitting and uh, denying traffic flows, you'll be aware of this, what's called this wildcard mask. Now, if you haven't done any access control lists before and this, you're seeing this for the first time, you're going to look at this wildcard mask and go, what the hell is this? This looks really, really weird because essentially this next part, this wildcard mask, is it's like the inverse of a subnet mask. So what do I mean by that? Well, what we actually see is if I press question mark here, OSPF is actually saying, hey, what's your wildcard mask that you'd like to use on this, this network? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the, the wildcard mask of 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0. .0. And what I'm going to say is, now again, this is slash 28. So essentially what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, we're going to work this out together. What wildcard mask will this be? You'll see that I'm using this 0.0.0. .0, .0. Now let's just explain this for a moment because what, let's just, translate this back to a normal subnet mask for a moment. The subnet mask for this network is one, sorry, it's not one, it's 255.255.255. And this is where if it was slash 24, be dot zero. Because it's slash 28, the subnet mask will be 240. So that's our normal subnet mask for this network. But now we're using OSPF and it's expecting a wildcard mask. 
When I mentioned there a moment ago, it uses the inverse of this subnet mass. So what's that? Well, what this is, is basically we need to essentially inverse this subnet mask. Here's a handy way or a, a tool that you can use to actually help you to get the right subnet mask um, and wildcard bits. So what I can do is I can use a simple formula to say I'd like to use this 32-bit 255.255.255.255, whatever my subnet mask is, so in this case it's 255.255.255.240, what I can do is a subtraction. So literally, if I, if I just do a sub simple subtraction here against this, I'll get, if I take away 255 minus 255, I get zero. If I take 255 away from 255 here, I get zero. If I take 255 away from 255, I get zero again. And finally, if I take 240 away from 255, I'm going to get a value of 15. So this is actually one wildcard mask that I can use to basically say, hey, I would like to start communicating on the interface of this network and start publishing this into the OSPF process. So essentially, that's my wildcard mask that we'll use. Now again, just so that you know, and if you're watching this and you've got a lot of experience with OSPF, there is many other ways to do this, but we're just gonna use the subnet mask and this wildcard bits for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say 0.0.0.0.15, and the last part of this command is area zero. So what's this all about? What I'm gonna be saying is this is known as the backbone area of OSPF. And whenever we start off creating our OSPF network, we always start off with a backbone, and that becomes what's known as area zero. If we studied more of OSPF, we, we'll realize that we can add extra areas. So for example, if for example, we wanted to expand this network in the future, we could add an area one, an area two, and we could scale up from there. However, we're keeping things simple at the moment. We're keeping all of our routers in this same area. So essentially what we'll do is we'll form neighbor relationships and we'll share information about routers that are in this area. So I'm just gonna literally finish off this command by typing enter. So what I've just essentially done there is I've just educated this router one with this networks, with this network command. Okay guys, so at this point in time, I'm gonna pause and stop the video because again, hopefully you've taken in a little bit of information. We've configured our first router with a router ID. We did, we used a couple of different ways to do that, how it, how it figured this out was, one, just using the highest interface of the router that was up, up state, and also we saw a loopback, what it would do, and then we saw finally the router ID command. We've also, for the first time, seen this network command and how this works with the wildcard mask and adding it into area zero, which is known as the backbone. In our next video, part two, guys, we're gonna, hopefully you'll join me again. Hopefully I haven't put you off OSPF at this stage, but what we'll be doing is we'll be expanding the information that we're gonna plug into this um, OSPF process, and we're gonna try and get what's called neighbor relationships forming between routers so that they start sharing the information they know about to each other. Okay guys, I hope this has been valuable to you, and thanks for watching.